Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. To make a query in Design View, click the Query Design button that appears within the Queries button group, which is named the Other button group in Access 2007, that appears on the Create tab within the ribbon. That will create a new query within the Query Design View. The first thing that you will see is the Show Table dialog box appear over the Query Design view. Just as when using this within the Relationships window, here you will have to add the table or tables that you need for the query into the Query Design view. You simply select the names of the tables that you wish to add, and then click the Add button within the Show Table dialog box to add the necessary tables to the query. Now the Query Design View gives you power and flexibility in designing queries. Although it isn't the only way to make them initially, you will have to learn how to use Query Design View at some point as you grow in your access skill set. In Query Design View, the tables from which you extract data are placed into the top section of the Design View. You then add the fields from these tables that you want to view within your query results into the bottom grid section. The bottom grid section, which is called the QBE, or Query by Example Grid, is where you place any fields that you would like to see in the query results. If you would like to add all of the fields from a query table into your query's result set, note that you can click and drag the first field within the table, which is displayed as an asterisk, down into the QBE grid. When you release it, it will then show all of the fields within that table in the result set of the query. Now once your fields are in place, you also add any criteria and sorting options as needed to the QBE grid to filter and sort only the data that you wish to see. Also, ensure that you only select the tables that you absolutely need in order to run the query. Adding additional tables which you will not use forces the query to access these tables whenever it's run, slowing it down pointlessly. It can also produce unexpected and sometimes erroneous results. As you add the necessary tables to the query, the joins which you created between the tables will also be displayed at the top of the query. Make sure that you have added all of the necessary tables for your query. For example, assume that you have two tables from which you wish to extract data, the customer's table and the employee's table. However, also assume that those two tables do not share a direct join between them. In order for the query results to make any sense whatsoever, you would also have to add the table that is used to associate those two tables as well. So assume that the employees table is related to the customers table through the sales table. In this case, you would also have to add the sales table to the query, even if you had no intention of displaying any data from that particular table. It's simply needed in order to relate the two tables from which you want to extract data. If you add two tables that are not joined to each other in any way, the query result will often produce a Cartesian product, where every value in every row of one table is multiplied by the value of every row in the second table. You will usually notice when this happens, as you will probably have several hundred if not thousand more records in your query result set than you do data records in either table. Once you've added the necessary tables to the query, you can click the close button in the show table dialog box to close it and display the query design view beneath it. You should see the tables that you have added shown as small table diagrams at the top of the query design view. If you forgot a table and need to add it into the query, 
you can click the show table button that appears in the query setup button group on the design tab of the query tools contextual tab within the ribbon to bring up the show table dialog box again. If you accidentally added a table which you do not need, you may right click on the table diagram of the table that you do not want to have appear in the query design view and then choose the remove table choice from the pop-up menu that appears to remove the table from the query. Next you will then add the fields that you want to show in the query result set from the tables into the grid at the bottom of the query design view. One way to do this is to click and drag the name of the field that you want to display from the tables and drop them into the columns at the bottom of the design grid. You can also simply double click on the name of a field shown in the table to add it into the design grid as well. There are actually quite a few ways that you can add fields from the tables into the grid area below. Note that the order in which the fields are listed in the grid is the order in which those fields will be displayed in the query result set. Now before you can remove a field which you have accidentally added to the grid or reorganize the order of the fields within the grid, you must first select the column to delete or move within the result set. To do this, place your mouse pointer slightly above the column within the grid area that you want to select until you see a downward pointing black arrow. Then click once to select the field. To delete it at that point, you can simply press the delete key on your keyboard. To move it, place your mouse arrow into the very top of the selected column and then click and drag the selected column left or right. As you drag, you'll see a thick black line appear between the columns over which you drag your mouse. This line represents where the column will be inserted when you release your mouse. Most often, after you've added the fields that you want to view into the query grid, you then add sorting and filtering criteria to the query. However, if you do not wish to restrict the data that is displayed, then you can simply run the query at this point. To run a query and view the result set, you can click the Run button that appears in the Results button group on the Design tab of the Query Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon to view the query's result set. The result set looks like a base table does when it's viewed in Datasheet view. However, a query result set is not, by default, a base table in the same way that your other database tables are. The table that is produced when you run a query disappears as soon as you close the query. A query is really a definition of what data should be retrieved and displayed from the tables. Therefore, a query almost always shows the most up-to-date data every time that you run it. You can switch the query back to the Query Design view after you have run the query by clicking the View drop-down button in the View button group on the Home tab in the ribbon. If you click the View drop-down arrow, then select the Design view choice from the drop-down menu. Either way, once you are ready to save your query, click the Save button in the Quick Access toolbar. You can then type a name for your query into the dialog box which appears, and then click the OK button to save the query. You can then close the query without losing all of your query design work. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.